I want to discuss a very important and sensitive issue about our space research organization ISRO. Many people of our country and beyond think that India's space programs, especially the interplanetary science-based missions, are worthless for India. Developing and a poor nation like India has no right to spend millions on projects like uh, uh, like Chandrayaan 2 or Mangalyaan. The message through this video will be delivered to you through a series of dialogues between a man who thinks space research for India to be worthless and our president Kalam sir who was one of the pioneers of our space history. I would try to portray what Kalam sir would have said if he were asked those questions. Nice to meet you sir. You have been a scientist, a teacher, politician, statesman and even a president. You have been one of the pioneers of Indian space program. Sir, I want to begin with that sir. I just feel that space missions should be more integrated between all the nations of the world and funded that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for asking this question. And nice to meet you too. Uh, uh, integrated the space program of the world. Well, that's the question. Uh, yes, uh, it's a nice idea. Uh, but uh, can you give me a single example in any field, not only science, that has uh, an integrated department of the world? Uh, suppose that there is a topic. Okay, there is a topic. If you divide that topic into number of departments and distribute that to a number of people, uh, then the task becomes easier. Uh, after all, uh, the you know everyone knows that after all the uh, space age began with the space race between the USA and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The space age would not have started without the Cold War. Uh, although it was not a good thing, uh, but still, uh, that's the truth. So, you agree that space missions are all about competitions among different countries, different nations? Uh, <laughs> no, not always. It began with the competition in the 1950s, but now there is uh, no space race as such. Now the core of uh, space research is not competition, but uh, to be honest, you can't ignore uh, the competition totally. Sometimes uh, competition uh, do comes into the picture, especially when uh, launching spy satellites and uh, the, this one, the, the anti-satellite missile system. Uh, but see, competition is uh, everywhere in every field you take uh, sports you take music you take military you take arts you take anything uh, moreover if uh, competition can prove to be the driving force to know more uh, to do more then uh, it is justified to some extent not totally but justified to some extent Okay, but don't you think, sir, that space research organizations are show off and the self-proclaimed indicator of development? <laughs> show offs are those things which are uh, boastfully implemented, uh, right? This is also true to some extent. Do you know why? Because people, the normal people, the normal public, listens to the government more than they listen to the scientists. Have you ever seen or heard an ISRO or a NASA scientist showing off or boasting of his or her inventions? No. But you see the government doing so. The government doing that. This is really unfortunate of science being controlled by politics. Politicians uh, use science for their own benefit and this is true 
for every field of science and development not only space programs you see russia boasting of its invention of covid vaccine <laughs> but there is another reason why space development comes so much into the limelight in uh, india you see if uh, today both uh, nasa and uh, isro launches a spy satellite uh, independently and then there will be no mu- so much stir among the americans but the indians will be overwhelmed uh, this is also has a reason because indians are not used to it nasa is uh, giving bumper prizes to the americans from uh, 1950s similarly the roscosmos space, russian space agency is giving bumper prizes to the russians from 1950s but isro has started to give us from only 2008 initially americans and russians had the same fantasy what the indians have today okay sir understood but my one major allegation is that what is the point in spending so much for space research for no reason when there's a major financial crisis in the country uh, first of all please don't use the word so much uh, why i am coming to that to justify this let me tell you a story and uh, please try to relate to the story to your question uh, there was a family a very rich wise and wealthy family they attained their wealth by their intelligence intelligence was uh, engraved in the blood of every member of that family they lived happily and enjoyed supremacy in their neighborhood for many years but one day their house was invaded by the coits they came looted tortured and killed the members but as i told you the family members were brave and intelligent so they fought back the fight took a long time to finish and finally the robbers left but in that process they looted more than 95% of their wealth soon they became one of the poorest family in their neighborhood uh, and they lost their uh, identity they were in a miserable state at that time there were many young boys and girls in that family but unfortunately seeing the miserable condition of their father majority of the youngsters left their home and planned to settle in wealthy colonies but there were some boys and girls left in the home who truly loved their ancestors their father their mother and had the urge to know more but at that time their father had two options as he was a labor his income was nominal he can tell his sons that he would be unable to afford their education and on the other hand he would overcome all the difficulties and invest a major part of his income to the education of his son that would require compromisation of essentials of his family but he chose the second option you follow he chose the second option because he wanted he wanted his sons to genuinely become educated and again bring back the lost glory of his father mother and sisters and his uh, family the man wanted to make his son self reliant atmanirbhar he was criticized by his relatives by his neighbors by his friends and he was not able to supp- as he was not able to supply the right medicines to his critically disabled wife but he was still investing in uh, higher education of his son he remained silent to the critics 
Some years later, some years later, his son was able to bring back the lost glory of his father. Proud of those sons and daughters. Do you follow? Really, sir. I understood. So no comments. And an another thing which I forgot is about the budget which you were telling. Honestly, the GDP of our country, India, is about slightly more than 200 lakh crore rupees. 200 lakh crore rupees. That is 2 into 10 to the power 14. 2 into 10 to the power 14 INR. I heard some people saying that uh, we should invest more in education and agriculture than space technology. Uh, my uh, my my one and only request to those people is that please go and uh, and check the facts and figures in the internet. India government spends almost uh, three lakh crore, three lakh crore in agriculture. Almost 70,000 crore rupees in health sector. 70,000 crore rupees in health sector. And almost 1 lakh crore in education. 1 lakh crore in education. And do you know how ISRO, uh, how much uh, money ISRO receives annually? ISRO receives only 13,000 crore rupees. Which is just... 174 crore dollars NASA's budget is 250 crore dollars ISRO's budget is 170 crore dollars now tell me where is the expenditure don't you think uh, ISRO's uh, budget should be increased and these are all annual figures don't you think that the country which has invented zero, which has invented uh, uh, trigonometry, invented uh, differentiation, uh, algebra, place value, and he also invented decimal system, uh, etc. involved in uh, one of the most uh, complex form of technology, that is uh, space technology. Despite all the difficulties and, uh, and the, the negative forces, and humans are always unconditional learners since time immemorial. Humans are always unconditional learners. When we brainstorm, we discover, we invent, we do it just to gain knowledge. We don't think that the knowledge will have some direct application or not in our daily lifestyle. Because our application is limited, but knowledge is unlimited. Therefore, the core of gaining knowledge, the reason of gaining knowledge should not be the application of that knowledge, but should be just to gain that knowledge. We should not forget righteousness at the time of gaining knowledge, because where there is righteousness in the heart, where there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. Where there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in the hope. When there is harmony in the hope, there is order in the nation. And when there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world.